What's up traders, welcome back to the video. Today we're gonna to be looking at multiple different ways that we can use the COT data in our trading in order to make a trading decision or use it as a external data confirmation. In the last video, we went over what each of the categories are between the dealer and asset managers institutions and the leverage funds. So in this video, we are going to be looking at how to read the data overall. Let's not waste any time. Let's get right into the video. So as we look here, this is a template that I built using the newer version of the Prime Market Terminal. But we can easily compare this to the older version of the system if we just do, you know, a comparison between the pairs because this would be your Aussie and then your New Zealand right here. Right. So we can compare this as Aussie New Zealand. We could also view it as, say, USD and then CAD. So USD CAD, USD Swiss. And we could go through each pair with just this basic template I have set up right here. So right now I just have it selected as the leverage fund. So you could build a template for, say, uh, the asset managers, institutions and the dealer in area if that is something that you are wanting to look at. So primarily starting off here, what we can do to look at the COT report as a external data confirmation would be to be trading with the COT report, right? So in this case, as I stated in the last video, the leverage funds timeline are generally going to be about one month, three month, six month, up to a year timeline. So if we're using the leverage funds in this case, uh, if you want to use the asset managers and institutions, like I said before, go ahead, test it out. But just for the sake of the timelines matching up with our timeline, I will be referencing the leverage funds, at least in this example. So what we can do is go through this specific template right here. And also on the screen, I'll have overlaid a different template that we can do in the older system. And what we can do here very quickly and easily is go through the list and say that the USD is mostly long. Aussie is mostly short. So then we could just take the pairs, match them up to each one. So in this case, we could look at AUD, USD, right? So remember that they're mostly short on the Aussie, mostly long on the US dollar. And then we could go into the analysis of the system. And in this case, I'm just going to go straight to the seasonality chart. And we can use this data then then have a bearish outlook on AUD, USD. And that is because they're bearish on the Aussie and bullish on the US dollar. So that would indicate that they're overall bearish, right? So in this case, we're pairing those two pieces of data together, and then we can look at the Aussie US dollar in this case and have a bearish outlook on it. Now that doesn't mean that it is going to go down necessarily, uh, but that can just lead us to a premise to do a technical analysis on it, right? Uh, you could go say to market structure, determine the market structure on the different time frames. We could also take a look at the seasonality. So we could use this overall to just get a bearish outlook on the pair. And then we could choose the different types of data that we have tested and know we want to use. So in this case, if we wanted to use the COT report in the seasonality, you could almost still have a, uh, say, bearish outlook on the pair, uh, just knowing that this is going into maybe a possible consolidation for the next 40 days or so. So in this case, you could almost just look at it, go and check a different uh, setup, right? Uh, I'll just go ahead and star this one so we can keep going back to it. So we'll go back to here and then maybe we look at a different pair, right? Uh, so in this case, we could look at maybe USD GBP uh, is mostly long uh, and we can look at maybe CAD, right? So GBP is mostly long with 32.3K. The CAD is mostly short with 30K versus 22. So we could go ahead, uh, possibly look at GBP CAD. And the point of this is just looking at and comparing the different pieces of data, right? This is automatically done, of course, in the Prime Market Terminal already for us. I'll show you that. So if I scroll on down here to GBP CAD, um, which is right here. Right, and I go on over to the COT report, COT summary. This would do the comparison automatically. We just got to choose which one we're looking at. So in this case, it is leveraged funds, right? So they're mostly long on the GBP, mostly short on the CAD. So that would lead us in this case, just using this piece of data specifically to have a bullish bias on the market. If we check out the asset managers institution, uh, they are actually 
mostly short, and then it looks like somewhat neutral, mostly long on the CAD. So uh, in this case, they're opposite of each other. And that just kind of comes down to their specific timelines, right? So in this case, they're long. In this case, they're short. So then we could go through the system. We could look at the different pieces of data, right? So in this case, the seasonality is mostly short. So this would align with the asset managers and institutions, which have a farther out timeline than the leverage funds. So depending on which piece of data you do choose to use, um, you just want to make sure you test it before you implement this into the real market, right? We don't want to just hop in, just choose one or the other and go back and forth. Uh, that would be very unprofessional and just kind of a reckless decision. So that kind of comes down to your choice. So let's say, for example, we're using the leverage funds, which in this case are more of a long bias on this pair specifically. We could go ahead and then look at, say, another pair and we could choose a different pair to look at. Right. So we could go back to our dashboard and we could do another report. Right. Uh, we could find another one. Uh, so in this case, let's maybe look at um, we could try Euro USD. So I'll go um, up here, Euro USD, and go to seasonality. So if we look at Euro USD in the older version, just for the sake of the comparison being right underneath, let's take a look here and match these up real quick. And we could choose leverage funds. So they're mostly short and then mostly long on the US dollar. Um, and then that would give us the indication of an overall short bias on the Euro US dollar, right? Another way that we can do this is, you know, obviously pair this up with these supply and demand levels, right? So right here, you can see we already have one at 114 and then one at 111 or yeah, 1.11. Um, so we'll go up here and I'll just drop a point right there and down here. And we could just use that specifically just to set up our targets. And in this case, just following, you know, the, at the leverage funds, uh, we could have a short bias on the market. And then we would look for our price action confirmation into the market, right? So next, the question is really, what if both of them are both, say, bearish? Uh, if we look back at this page and go back to the dashboard, and the reason I'm kind of using both systems right now is because we're kind of in that transition period where some people are going to start using the new system once we release it. So I figured I would use both just to get everybody familiar with, uh, you know, some of the different features of both. Um, but let's just say that in this case, you could look at AUD and then the Swiss, right? In this case, they're both mostly short on each asset. And, you know, obviously that's because there's two different currencies, two different contracts. And the question always arose to me, you know, what do we do in this situation? I've heard of other traders doing this in the market. So if you do choose to look at this as an option, I do encourage you to uh, test this like I did the last one as well. So in this case, there is 45.7K short on the Aussie, 10.8K long. So mostly short. If we look over here at the Swiss, in this example, it is 8.2K short and 2.5K long. What we can do, and I recommend you test before you do this, is that since there's mostly more short on the Aussie versus the Swiss, we could, if the tests do prove, that this means that the Aussie is more short and that means that possibly Aussie Swiss could uh, go down, right? Because the Aussie Swiss... Aussies in front, Swiss is in the back of the pair. So we could use that as like a bearish bias, right? And you could go through each currency and uh, maybe for this case, we could look at US GBP USD, right? So GBP is mostly long with 32.3K here and 12.1K on the US dollar. So we could take that possibly as a bullish bias on this position specifically, right? If you do choose to go down this route, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you test this before you do it. And that just goes for the entire entirety of this video. Don't just take what I say and start implementing it live. Always, always test and have some sort of data to back up your trading plan before you go ahead and implement this live. Um, and this is just one way that we could go about using the COT report. In this view, it is very easy to compare each one. You know, there's multiple different ways that you can set this up. Even in the older system, you can, I showed this in the last video, but I'll show it here as well. 
we could come in here and we can choose the, we'll choose this one to start out. Uh, this is one version that you could do, right? Uh, I have every single pair here, just simply by adding it as a widget from the cot section. And I went down the entire currency list and added that in, right? And you could go down this entire list, you know, you flip over to whichever one you want to do and get an easy comparison of each one. And that's just another way that we could do it, at least in the older version of the system, you know, versus the newer one is a lot more condensed. But even this only took me about five minutes to set up. Um, and going over those last two, this is just one way that you could easily view this data just using a dashboard uh, rather than going into each prime analysis, you know, looking at the cot summary and so on. So this is just the overall first way that we can use the data and look at it, right, and read it. Uh, this is very simple, nothing really complex. We're really just looking at pie charts here and comparing and looking for, in this case, you can see Euro USD, mostly short, mostly long. And each version of the system, this one might even be a little bit easier just because you can easily, if you don't have all the pairs quite memorized quite yet, you know, this could be easier versus having to go through and, you know, think of uh, GBP Swiss. If you're relatively new, you might not know all the pairs quite yet. And that basically leads us into the next way that we can read the data. And that is using the cot history table. So here I already have um, technical difficulty. Here we can look at the cot history table. And this is a template I already had set up before. And this is for looking at the cot history tables for each currency. And what we can look at here is something that we call flip data. And what a flip is, is what we're going to be doing is looking at the net percent right here. And what a flip is, is I'll show you an example. So here would be a flip, right? So we're on net percent, scroll down. You can see that this is 5.4 and it's positive. So a flip is going to be right here. When we go from net positive to net negative. That is what we call a flip. Also, it goes for the other way, right? So if we go from net negative to net positive on a pair such as, in this case, the Japanese yen, that is what we consider a flip. And we can look for these flips using the cot history tables pretty quickly, right? Uh, especially ones that are more recent. We could just quickly slide over. Um, in this case, on this template, we could just slide over really quick. And you can see that at least on the British pound, there has been a more recent flip from net negative to net long. And this was about two, three weeks ago. And we can go back on the chart and determine, um, you know, the flip. And then you could go ahead and use that information of the flip data. We could go compare different ones. So in this case, it is GBP uh, AUD, right? And more recently, there has been a flip here uh, in the AUD. I don't know if there's been a flip recently. This one looks like it's been short for quite a while. Uh, this one has been short since about August 24th. Um, so in this case, been short for quite a while. Um, and these are something that don't happen quite often, right? A flip is something that will take a lot of time to develop because if you think about it, the leverage funds are, um, you know, they have those a lot farther out timelines, one, three, six, 12 month timelines. So this isn't going to be like your typical swing trading operation, right? These trades might take one, three, six months to play out. You know, overall, looking at this data, there are some examples that I can show you. So I'm going to go ahead and load up that chart example. So I'm going to go to Euro Swiss flip chart right there. And that's going to pull it up right there. So this is the example. Um, I already have it kind of marked out here on the chart, but I'm going to show you for the first example down here, uh, pay attention to net position percent right there. As we scroll down, you can see that for most of 2021, that the euro has been short by leverage funds. And we're going to look for that initial flip right here. So you can see that as we're into March of 2021, you can see that on the 9th of March was initially when it went from net positive, which you can see right here, it was positive for quite a while. So we're going to go in and we're going to see that it went zero. So that's what this first date first date's going to be. So the COT report's always going to be based on Tuesday's data, right? So they report on Tuesday, they release the report to us on Friday. So this is going to be three days in the future because, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So you can see here, I have it marked out as the 12th of March. The data is really based on the 9th, which is right here. 
but we don't get the report until the 12th, which is Friday after market close. And this is going to be the next report over here. So we would have got the data over here on the 16th, which you can see down here on the chart. Uh, so we wouldn't have got that data until the 19th. But that kind of gives us our entry, uh, initial entry timeline, right? Uh, just because it's kind of signifying that they're going uh, flipping from net long to net short. Does that mean that you should enter a trade? No, not really. This is going to be more of a basis for a strategy. Um, but it's something to pay attention to, right? If they're kind of flipping their position on a certain currency from net long to net short. So there's that right there. And I kind of just marked it out by this being like your en entry zone. You had all this time right here really to enter the market. So I'm going to hold down shift on my keyboard. And you really had, um, I mean, 50 to 60 days in this regard right here to really get into the market more, I mean, more realistically, like 50 days almost. So you had two months to really notice this overall, right? And you can see through 2021, we're already in uh, December. Currently, it's December 21st right now. But you can see that this move overall has been taking a nice move to the downside. So if I'm going to go ahead and press shift and go down to here, uh, you can see that this was a 600 pip move. I mean, overall, it's a little bit more than that, right? But uh, let's look at the chart down here. So you can see that this was the initial flip to zero and then the initial flip to negative right there. And you can see as we move throughout the year, right, uh, it has hit zero percent a few more times, but overall it stayed to zero or negative for almost the entire year. Um, even if you were to get in here at uh, from this kind of flip from uh, zero to right here, you still, I mean, you would have had plenty of time to get into this trade. These, I mean, these trades are gonna be a lot longer term, right? So you're looking at maybe three month to six month timelines when taking these, um, but you also kind of maybe set up a parameter around trimming, um, also different timelines like three month and six month targets. But you can see here for most of the year, I mean, the entire year, it's been under 0%. And I'll show you up here on the chart over here as well. But even up to current date, we're still negative on the euro. And that's kind of led to a nice 600 pip move to the downside. So looking over here at the chart, I'll show you that initial move to the downside as well. So I'm going to zoom in really far over here just so you guys can see better in the video. So you can see here it is... Um, March 2nd and this would be that March 9th date where we initially went to uh, zero as it says right there and this is where it was basically you know this is initially when it's going to flip down to zero and you can see we remained below that zero and made our way downward. One thing that you can look for on this historical data chart is actually kind of like support and resistance right so let me kind of zoom back in um, like you can see here on the euro at least as it gets up to that 6.4 to like 10 range, uh, it does kind of act as a resistance. So uh, you can also look for some sort of support and resistance on this chart as well. Like you can see down here at negative 35 to, come on baby, uh, like negative 36 to negative 33, that acted as some sort of support. So maybe as this one kind of gets lower down to there, it could act as some support also here negative 20 so you can look at these maybe as targets as well right so let's say that it will flip from positive to zero and it gets down to this 20 range right here where it previously kind of caught support maybe that's an area that you take profits off um, but overall you can go through this history chart right here all the way up to 2006 um, maybe look at some historical changing points in that net percent um, and I'll pull up the chart settings right here, actually. So I'm going to click on the settings. You can see I'm on Euro, leverage funds, net percent. Um, so I'm going to pull up some different examples right here. Yeah, so I'm going to choose actually the Japanese yen here. And I'm going to choose the Japanese yen here. Um, and let's go ahead and move this over to current day. And the last time that the Japanese yen flipped was over here on February 23rd of 2021. So I'm going to go over to the chart and we're going to go to February 23rd, which would be right here. So this is when the report came out. So I'm going to go one, two, three more days. So I'm going to put a vertical line right there. I'm also going to 
kind of zoom in on this day. I'm going to put a horizontal line and that's going to signify the initial flip on the dollar on the yen where it had this kind of big move to the downside, right? And it might be a little bit easier for you if you want to go ahead and um, look at the chart. So we're going to look at the chart. We're going to see we flip from net positive to net uh, negative over here, right? So on the 2nd of March, on the 2nd uh, or the 23rd of February, so there's that one right there, which is actually, this one was at 0 0.1, so we're technically still positive. You're gonna be most likely looking at this uh, flip on the 2nd of March of 2021. So 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th. So I'm gonna actually move this date to the 5th of March, which is actually like, quite a bit higher, uh, but all is good, right? So there's that price right there. Um, and basically, right, I mean, you would have answered this trade, you would have had, uh, that initial flip to the upside, which was right here. And you can see that we had uh, a, quite a big jump. So we went from negative 3.4% all the way up to negative 27%. And for the rest of the year, it's been essentially a negative position on the Japanese yen. And on this example right here, we're actually looking at the US dollar yen. So if the yen goes down, uh, US dollar Japanese yen is going to go higher, right? So, I mean, essentially, right here to current day, which is still negative. Uh, let's get this bad boy to the top. So, right here, you can see that we're still negative. I mean, overall, if you were to enter that trade right there on that day, um, you still had some more opportunities after that, really up to this point right here, which was uh, another 90 days into the future. Uh, if you're to continue that kind of based off your own trading rules to the current day, that's a 579 pip move to the upside. Overall, that move is uh, way over a basically a 700 pip move to the upside, right? I'm um, not saying you're going to capture that entire move, but like I said before, you're going to want to look at different time frames. So uh, you can look here and this would be a about a six month time frame, so 180 days. Um, but even maybe up to those yearly time frames, right? So maybe you hold a trade for a year. Uh, these are going to be a lot longer term trades, uh, as I said before. So possibly up to a year, maybe one month, three month, six month trades. So maybe you want to get yourself a broker with uh, very low uh, swaps, right? <laughs> so we don't want to be paying too much in swaps. So this is the cot. Uh, episode two series of just using the data in our trading. And of course you can take the cot data and pair it up with our other data. Um, you know, possibly the long-term prediction, uh, maybe the DXM order stream. Uh, there is a ton of possibilities that you can do with the prime market terminal in terms of pairing data together. Uh, this is just one example of how you can use, well, this is just three examples of how you can use the data, you know, possibly in your trading and specifically looking at the cot report. So if you do have any questions, leave them down below. Otherwise, I want to thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.